Hi guys, so for station two, we are talking about how to make annotations for the star test. So it is so important to annotate while you read. Annotating is when you make notes about the passage while you read. You can see an example of what that looks like here with this passage looking to the sky. You can see that things are circled. There are notes written in the margins. You see words pointing to arrows. We have a lot of different notes. All of those are annotations. Unfortunately, because the star test is online and the way the app works, you're not able to write directly on the passage like you see here or directly on the passage like how we would do when a passage is on paper. So what we're going to do today is practice a new annotation strategy that you will be able to use on the star test. So on the star test, you will be given scratch paper. Just like with your math star test, you're going to get white pieces of paper. You can use as many of those pieces of paper as you need to. You can just ask the teacher in your room for more paper as needed. So if you've not done so already, you are going to need to get a piece of white paper. They should be on your table already. And you're going to fold it into four sections. So where these four darker lines are, up and down and side to side, you are folding your paper into four sections. And then each section of the paper, each quadrant is going to be labeled the same. So each quadrant you are going to have it look like this. So you have title, then genre, then notes, and a big blank space, and then questions that are numbered. So each quadrant should look like that. So if you need to pause this video to take some time to set up your paper so that it looks just like this, do that now, and then come back to this video. So once you have your paper all set up, in Schoology, you're going to go to today's station, station number two, annotating, and you will need to go to number two, star passage. And you are going to put this attachment in Notability. It's called from Cool Jobs Sports Science. It's four pages long with a passage and questions. Put all of that into Notability. So, because of the way I'm having to film this video, I'm going to be showing you how to take notes on my iPad, but you are gonna be doing this on paper. So that paper that you just set up with the four quadrants, you are going to be following along with me and you are going to fill in just one of those quadrants for this passage. So whenever you look at your paper, you can see there's one, two, three, four quadrants. As you're following along with this sports passage, you're just filling out the first quadrant. Everything else you'll leave blank for right now. Okay, so when I set this up, you can see I have my title, genre, and notes at the top. And then for questions, I put 10, 11, and 12. I did that because the question numbers for this passage are 10, 11, and 12. So that's why I put 10, 11, and 12 in the quadrant. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and fill out what I can. So the title of this passage is from Cool Jobs Sports Science. And for the genre, I'm just going to skim through a little bit here to see what the genre is. And I see that it is talking about studies, it's talking about real people, it's talking about science, it's giving me facts and details. So I know that this is going to be nonfiction. So because this is nonfiction, I wanna focus on things like vocabulary words I might not know. I want to focus on stopping and jotting any notes um, so that I can break down the passage a little bit more to make sure that I'm still paying attention. So as I read, I'm going to add in any notes that I would typically add in on the passage itself. I'm now going to add in in the section that says notes on the quadrant. 
So I'm going to go ahead and start reading. It says, From Cool Jobs, Sports Science by Helen Fields. The gymnast reaches her arms high and then takes off running. She cartwheels to the far end of the beam and springs into the air. She spins, lands squarely on her feet, and raises her arms in triumph. The stadium fills with cheers. A great performance followed by a great landing. It was just the thing to win the girl, an American gymnast named Shannon Miller, a gold medal in the 1996 Olympic Games. Normally, when you send something spinning through the air, such as a ruler or a pen, it doesn't land perfectly on end. But that's what a gymnast must do, land cleanly on her or his feet, even after twisting and turning through the air. Jill McNitt Gray studies how gymnasts do this. At the University of Southern California in Los Angeles, she works as a biomechanist. That means she's an expert in how living things move. And to do gymnastics, she explains, even though you don't know it, you're learning mechanics. Hers is just one field where science and sports meet. In fact, there are a huge variety of scientists who study sports. So I'm going to pause here because uh, I have just read a few paragraphs and it's about to move into a new section. I can tell that based on the next heading. So I'm gonna stop and jot what I learned from this section. So the first thing that I see is they're painting a picture of a gymnast. So that's someone who does gymnastics, um, flipping and cartwheeling and spinning and twisting. And then she ultimately lands on her feet. And then it goes on to talk about how with inanimate objects, if you throw them and spin them in the air, they're probably not going to land on the end. But gymnasts are able to land on their feet. And then it talks about how there's a scientist that studies this, and she is a biomechanist. And that means that she studies how living things move. So for my notes, I'm going to do paragraphs one through four. So I'm going to write paragraphs one through four. In paragraphs one through four, the author paints a picture of a gymnast flipping. We also see that there's a scientist, McNitt Gray. studies how gymnasts move. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and move on. So my next section, there's a heading there and it's called Stuck with Science. So I can infer that they are going to talk about how science and gymnastics meet because when it says stuck, that means whenever a gymnast lands from a super cool flip, and their feet stay still. They don't move their feet. They're stuck to the ground. So paragraph five, McNitt Gray has plenty of experience flying through the air. A gymnast throughout her teens, she's now an expert in helping new generations of these athletes land on their feet. Using high-speed video taken at two Summer Olympics, McNitt Gray and her coworkers have analyzed how gymnasts sail through the air and then stick their landings. The point of high-speed videos is to play them back very slowly. That allows the viewer to follow a gymnast's every move. Okay, so we see in paragraphs five and six, we learn how McNitt Gray studies gymnasts. She studies gymnasts using high-speed videos. So I'm going to say McNitt Gray studies gymnasts using high speed videos. Okay, so now I'm on paragraph seven. In this sport, we're talking about gymnastics, in this sport, landings are very important. Judges take off fractions of a point if a gymnast wobbles, takes a step, or even squats upon landing. 
And when a gymnast falls or fails to land feet first, well, that can cost a whole point and likely a spot on the winner's podium. So each gymnast wants to land firmly, balanced, and upright without waving an arm or taking a step. Okay, so paragraph seven talks about the importance of landings in gymnastics. So they're saying it's not only important that you can do all these cool flips in the air, you also have to land on your feet perfectly. So we're in paragraph eight now. The airborne path to that landing depends on two things, the takeoff and gravity. Once the athlete jumps, all a gymnast can alter is how the body is arrayed and oriented. Luckily, even upside down, half a turn from the end of a jump, a gymnast can still adjust a landing. You still have enough time to move to put yourself in the right position, explains McNick Grady. McNitt Gray. To rotate faster, a gymnast will draw in her arms. To slow down a turn, she can raise those arms over her head. An ice skater does the same thing. Bringing in the arms will speed up a spin. Extending them slows it down. It's all a matter of physics. How the mass of an object is distributed will affect how fast it rotates. When gymnasts make the correct mid-flight adjustments, they can safely slam their weight into the ground. You just have to be ready to handle it. McNick Gray says. Okay, so paragraphs eight and nine. Paragraphs eight and nine have some vocabulary words that might be a little bit confusing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down some of these vocabulary words so I can understand what this is saying. I'm going to write down the word alter. I'm going to write down the word arrayed, and I'm going to write down the word oriented. Okay, so alter means to change. And I know that because in the star app, there's a dictionary feature. So whenever you're in the star app, if I were to go into the dictionary and type in the word alter, then it would bring up the definition that alter means to change. So if you don't know what words mean, just like this, you look them up in the dictionary. So alter means to change. Arrayed, where it says all a gymnast can alter is how the body is arrayed and oriented. Arrayed means lined up. So they can change how their body is lined up, if they need to tuck in their legs, if they need to straighten out their legs. And then oriented means relation to the ground. So they can change how fast they're flipping, how fast they're spinning, um, in relation to the ground. So I'm going to, now that I've written my vocabulary words, I'm going to go ahead and stop and jot for paragraphs eight through 10. Since that's what we just read, we'll do paragraphs eight through 10. So paragraphs eight through 10 talk about how gymnasts can adjust mid flip. All right, so now in my last two paragraphs, coaches use her research to help gymnasts safely stick their landings. Carefully watching a particular athlete's technique can lead to suggestions, such as jumping a moment sooner or shifting the body's weight a tad more in one direction. McNitt Gray works on other sports too. She's helped divers enter the water smoothly and cleanly. Her analyses have aided tennis and golf players so that they can get their best swing at the ball. She has even studied how dental hygienists and professional cellists hold themselves when they work. It's all about using your muscles, she explains. All right, so paragraphs 11 and 12 talk about how studying movement helps athletes. In fact, it even talks about how it helps people beyond athletes. But because I'm running out of room, I'm just going to write athletes. Okay, so I have annotated this passage. 
I stopped and jotted, meaning after every few paragraphs, I stopped and I wrote down what I learned. This is really, really important so that you are paying attention to what you're learning, so that if you uh, read a whole bunch of paragraphs, you're able to check in with yourself and make sure you know what it is you're even reading. So I have read my passage, so now I need to move on to my questions. For this particular passage, there are only three questions that we are going to look at today. We have a space in this quadrant for questions. This does not mean you're copying down the questions. This is where you are going to write down any important notes that you would need in order to answer the question. So number 10 says, what is the most likely reason the author includes the details in paragraph one of the excerpt, Cool Jobs Sports Science? So it's asking us, why did the author write paragraph one? So I, of course, need to go back to paragraph one and read it. Paragraph one says, the gymnast reaches her arms high and then takes off running. She cartwheels to the far end of the beam and springs into the air. She spins, lands squarely on her feet, and raises her arms in triumph. The stadium fills with cheers. A great performance followed by a great landing. It was just the thing to win the girl, an American gymnast named Shannon Miller, a gold medal in the 1996 Olympic Games. Okay, so it's saying why did they include that? So before I even read my answer choices, I think that they included that to help us understand a little bit about gymnastics, a little bit about flipping, um, and to teach us a little bit about a true event that happened with a gymnast named Shannon Miller. So answer choice A says, to convey to the reader the pressure of Olympic gymnastics performances. Okay, in paragraph one, they are not talking about pressure. They're just giving us information about a true event. So I'm going to cross out answer choice A. And in the STAR app, you are actually able to eliminate answer choices. In the STAR app, in the top right corner, you'll see a little circle that looks like this with three lines. When you click on that, it's going to bring a drop down menu where you'll be able to eliminate answer choices. So we can eliminate answer choice A because it doesn't talk about the pressure that Olympic gymnasts face. Answer choice B says that the author included paragraph one to draw the reader into the topic of sports science using a true story. Okay, so it tells us a true story because it tells us about Shannon Miller. So Shannon Miller, it's a true story. Okay, and it draws the reader into the story because it's like we wrote in our notes section. It paints a picture of a gymnast flipping. It makes us interested because we're able to visualize the process. So B might be a good answer choice. But I'm going to continue reading all my answer choices. C says to highlight the way an error can keep a gymnast from victory. So an error means a mistake. And in paragraph one, Shannon Miller doesn't make a mistake. She actually wins a gold medal. So that is not what paragraph one is showing us. So I, just like before, can eliminate answer choice C. And then D says to show how well world class athletes must be able to perform. So again, it's just giving us a true story. It's not saying that they have to perform at any certain level. They're just telling us a story about how Shannon Miller performed and how she won a gold medal. So I'm going to eliminate answer choice D. So all I'm left with is answer choice B. The author included the details in paragraph one to draw the reader into the topic of sports science using a true story. I know that's correct because Shannon Miller is a true story. So I'm gonna write down answer choice B and in my questions section, I'm going to write down what I chose. I'm going to write down B. I'm going to do this so that I can easily go back and check my answers at the end of the test and make sure I didn't accidentally click the wrong answer choice. So number 10 is B. We're going to move on to number 11. We're going to go through the same process. So number 11 says, 
The problem and solution organizational pattern in paragraphs 7 through 11 of the excerpt from Cool Jobs Sports Science supports the topic by. Okay, so they are telling us that paragraphs 7 through 11 are problem solution. We don't have to wonder what organizational pattern they are. They are problem solution. But we have to figure out why did the author choose to write paragraphs 7 through 11 in the problem solution format. So, of course, our first step is to go back and read paragraph 7 through 11. So, starting in paragraph 7, it says, In this sport, landings are very important. Judges take off fractions of a point if a gymnast wobbles, takes a step, or even squats upon landing. And when a gymnast falls or fails to land feet first, well, that can cost a whole point, and likely a spot on the winner's podium. So each gymnast wants to land firmly, balanced and upright, without waving an arm or taking a step. The airborne path to that landing depends on two things, the takeoff and gravity. Once the athlete jumps, all a gymnast can alter is how the body is arrayed and oriented. Luckily, even upside down, half a turn from the end of a jump, a gymnast can still adjust a landing. You still have enough time to move to put yourself in the right position, explains McNitt Gray. To rotate faster, a gymnast will draw in her arms. To slow down a turn, she can raise those arms over her head. An ice skater does the same thing. Bringing in the arms will speed up a spin. Extending them slows it down. It's all a matter of physics. How the mass of an object is distributed will affect how fast it rotates. When gymnasts make the correct mid-flight adjustments, they can safely slam their weight into the ground. You just have to be ready to handle it, McNitt Gray says. Coaches use her research to help gymnasts safely stick their landings. Carefully watching a particular athlete's technique can lead to suggestions, such as jumping a moment sooner or shifting the body's weight a tad more in one direction. All right, so paragraph 7 through 11, it is talking about how if a gymnast doesn't land correctly, if they wobble, if they fall, if they even just bend their legs just a little bit, they're going to get points taken off. And so we see that there is a solution to this problem, that even in the air, they're able to uh, adjust their arms and adjust their legs so that they are able to land a little bit better. So I'm going to go back to my question. So number 11, the problem and solution organizational pattern in paragraphs 7 through 11 of the excerpt from Cool Job Sports Science supports the topic by. Answer choice A says highlighting the way gymnasts cannot rely on their coaches for feedback. At no point in paragraph 7 through 11 does it talk about how coaches are not helpful. That is not present in those paragraphs. So I'm going to eliminate answer choice A. Answer choice B says suggesting that no gymnast can land perfectly every time even with practice. They're not telling us the percentage of times that gymnasts can or can't land perfectly. Even though that might be a true statement, that's not stated in the text, and we want to make sure that our answer choice is found in the text. So I'm going to get rid of answer choice B. Answer choice C says revealing how hard gymnasts must work to understand the mechanics of their sport. Again, paragraph 7 through 11 is not talking about gymnasts understanding the mechanics. It's telling about how gymnasts are able to change parts of their flip, parts of their twist, in order to land. So it's not talking about them understanding mechanics. So I'm going to eliminate answer choice C. And then lastly, answer choice D says, illustrating how science helps gymnasts make adjustments to land successfully. Okay, paragraph 7 through 11 talks about how if a gymnast is about to fall, they can make alterations. They can change their orientation to the ground so that they are able to land and not lose those points. So my answer is going to be D. So remember, on my question side, I'm going to write my explanation of why D is correct. So I'm going to say that D is correct because it explains how gymnasts can alter flips mid-air 
And that is answer choice D. Again, we're writing down our correct answer so we can go back and check our answers at the end. All right, last one. Number 12. It says, what is the controlling idea of the excerpt from Cool Jobs Sports Science? So another way to say controlling idea is thesis or main idea. So what is the main idea of this excerpt? Before I even look at the answer choices, I think that the main idea is to teach us about how mechanics, how body mechanics um, help gymnasts, how gymnasts are able to change and make alterations based on science in order to improve their gymnastics abilities. So number 12, what is the controlling idea of the excerpt from Cool Job Sports Science? A says, gymnasts must change their body position in order to stick landings. That is a very, very small detail of the article. It might be true, but they don't have to change their body position every time. And this never even mentions science. And this whole article is based on science. So even though this might be a true detail, it's not the controlling idea. So I'm going to eliminate answer choice A. Answer choice B says science helps gymnasts and other athletes improve performance. Okay. So it's covering the science aspect, it's covering the gymnast aspect, and it's even covering the athletes that are mentioned at the end of the article. So this adequately sums up what the whole article was about. But I, of course, will read all my answer choices. Answer choice C says Shannon Miller is an American gymnast who won the Olympic gold medal. That is from one paragraph, that's just one detail. A controlling idea needs to include information from the entire selection. So we're going to cross out answer choice C. And lastly, answer choice D says Olympic gymnastics requires effort on the part of both athletes and coaches. Okay, that might be a true statement, but that is not what this article is about. It is not talking about the effort that Olympians must put in. So I'm going to cross out answer choice D. So all I'm left with is B, science helps gymnasts and other athletes improve performance. So I'm going to put B, my explanation is that it sums up all info from text. Okay, so that is the process of annotating. So we just filled in one quadrant of that note taking page. So now what you are going to do is you are going to now submit what you just did with me. So submit this quadrant. You can just take a picture of it and submit it to Schoology. You're submitting to submit annotation station assignment. And then you are going to, if you still have time left in this class period, you are going to go through that exact same process on your own using a new passage. You can access the new passage in today's Schoology. So if we go into Schoology, we're in our station to annotating, you can go to number four extension, and there's a new passage that you can read and annotate and answer the questions in your on your paper quadrant. If you have questions, ask your teacher but that is how we are going to be annotating for the star test.